Detachable Cable Liner In CPT systems, there are two out of the four major types that are detachables. They are the aerial cable car and the cable liner known as the detachable cousins. In this chapter, we will look at how a detachable cable liner works. Let us differentiate an LRT train and a cable liner. An LRT has internal motors to push the train forward. A cable liner has no motors in the train. The motor to propel the train is located in the station. The power of the motors pulls the train forward. Because an LRT train is about two times heavier than a cable liner train, it needs to be supported by a massive concrete deck and columns, whereas the lighter cable liner train needs only to be supported by a steel truss guideway and a thinner column. An LRT is operated manually by an operator on both sides of the train. A cable liner is driverless and fully automated. The areas reserved for drivers in an LRT train are allocated for passengers. Most of its travel direction and speed are preset. All the trains are operated or monitored in a control room located at one of the stations in a line. This is a sample control room of a cable liner, also called a mini metro. This is the control room located in Perugia, Italy. The manual and physical controls are shown in this control panel. There is no need to keep watch of these controls because most of the operations is automatic. These two people here are just mostly monitoring the operation via TV monitors. Should there be an emergency as seen by the monitors or detected by the sensors, this emergency stop can be pressed. The ability of a cable liner to detach from its cable and switch tracks allows it to increase its efficiency, capacity, and ridership. Let us look at how a cable liner performs these functions. First, let us review the mechanisms of attaching the train to the cable. A detachable cable liner means that a train that is attached to a cable can also be detached from the cable. This will allow the several trains to travel independently and to travel more than two stations. As a result, it can have a higher daily ridership. It can also serve a wider area of a part of a city where there is passenger demand. This is another view of the detachable grips. This cable pulling the train shown in dotted lines loops around between stations. The cable moves like a chain in an escalator all day until closing time. The movement of the detachable train slightly differ between an intermediate and an end station. First, we explore the intermediate station. At this point, this train leaves the station at a constant speed towards the next station. At this point, the train detaches from the cable. Instantaneously, the tire conveyors take over the propulsion. It decelerates to a full stop. Passengers deboard and board just like an LRT or BRT. After all the passengers are boarded, the train is accelerated by the conveyor. At this point, the train attaches to the cable. Instantaneously, the cable takes over the propulsion. It continues to travel until it arrives at the next station. The process of detaching from the cable and attaching to the cable is repeated. This is the zoomed view of the train when it is propelled by the tire conveyors. The train detaches from the cable here. The train attaches to the cable here. Note here that the detaching and attaching procedures of this model of a cable liner is similar to that of an aerial cable car. An actual application of the illustration previously shown is in the cable liner in Perugia, Italy. Its manufacturer, Leitner Poma, calls this system a mini metro. These photos show how the cable liner detaches and attaches to the cable. This is the point where the train detaches from the cable. This is the point where the tire conveyors take over the propulsion. While the train is already detached from the cable, the cable continues to loop around below the tracks until the operation closes close to midnight. This is a close-up view of the tire conveyors. On the other side of the track, the rotating tire conveyors will press upon the side strip of the train. The rotating motion will propel the train forward. 
This is the narrow path walk that passengers walk during a worst-case scenario breakdown of a cable liner. This is a close-up view of the tire conveyors pressing against the side strips of the cable liner. This is a clip of the boarding of passengers towards the train. This is a clip of the train as it departs the station. This is a clip of several trains traveling between two stations. This is a clip of the deboarding of passengers towards the exit. This is a photo of the cable liner arriving at the station. These are the rotating tire conveyors that press against a side strip of the train. The force of numerous tire conveyors on both sides of the train propel the train forward. Since the trains are already detached from the cable, these tire conveyors from four sides take over the propulsion of the two trains seen in this photo. To propel this train, these two tire conveyors rotate against the side strips on both sides of the train. As an example, this is how a small cable liner does a backing maneuver at an end station. This method of track switching of the cable liner is also known as the round table method. Let us now look at the unique and clever way of track switching in a cable liner. This example cable liner is in Oakland, California. This is a map of the cable liner line showing the four trains moving in a counterclockwise direction. This is the Coliseum station where we will show the track switching. This is the diagram of the Coliseum station. Switching is necessary in this system because the deboarding and boarding platform shares only one track. This is a satellite view of the Coliseum station where the track switching will occur. This is a video clip of the train arriving at the cable liner station. This is where the track switches are located. After the arrival of the train at the station, two important events will occur simultaneously. First is the grip switching from the left cable to the right cable. Second is the route switching from the left track to the right track. First, we will show the video of the grip switching from the left cable to the right cable. At this point, the grip has already transferred from the left cable to the right cable. While the grip of the cable is being switched, simultaneously, the tracks must also be switched. This is the video of the track switching from the left track to the right track. After the simultaneous cable and track switching, the cable liner can now travel in the opposite direction. In summary, these are the two major methods of track switching in a cable liner. First is the round table method and the pinched loop method. One of the most important aspects of rail-based mass transportation is track switching. A cable liner is not excluded in the need for track switching since it also runs on rails. This is an example of track or rail switching. Switch rails are being pushed or pulled by a rod powered by a motor. The motor is remotely controlled. The position of the switch rail will either provide a forward direction or rightward direction. Before we provide actual examples of track switching, we first show how track switching works. This is a video animation of an LRT track switching. First, on the left photo, we show a clip in which a train does not switch tracks. Next, on the right photo, we show which devices move to allow the train to switch tracks to change direction. It can be seen that the mechanism is very simple and easy to build. 
In all rail-based transportation, switching tracks is necessary. An example is the end portion of the Manila LRT-1. In this photo, track switching is used in backing, moving to a different line, and going in and out of a depot. Let us look at how an LRT does backing by changing tracks using the backing area of the end station of LRT-1. Trains cannot easily change lanes or do backing like a bus on a flat road because trains run on fixed tracks. Without track switching, the backing tracks of a train at an end station would look like an elliptical loop. The equivalent of this situation in a road is a cul-de-sac. The backing area is small because cars and buses are short compared to trains. There is a more efficient way of doing backing of long train sets. Instead of a loop or a large cul-de-sac as previously shown, the first step is to extend the tracks beyond the station. The second step is to put a switch rail. In this photo, you will see an actual photo of an LRT1 train on top of the backing area. With a switch rail, this will now be the layout of the rails of the backing area. This is the switch rail. The train driver that will end his trip at the end station will need to do a backing maneuver. This will allow him to continue his trip on the other side of the line in the opposite direction. The driver will use the switch rail to go to the other side of the line. This is the route of the train set in doing the part of the backing maneuver. This is now the new position of the train set. From this driver's seat, the driver will walk to the opposite end of the train station which has a duplicate driver's seat. This is the opposite route of the train set. Upon arriving at the covered station, the train set will board the first group of passengers. Another use of track switching is the addition of trains during peak hours and the reduction of trains during non-peak hours. Trains need to be able to transfer from one track to another. This can be achieved by switches. These are examples of switches of LRTs in Metro Manila. And these are more examples of switches at a depot of a Manila LRT. We have shown previously that in an LRT, switching is simple. This video will show that in a monorail, switching is more complex. In most cases, LRT is cheaper to construct, operate, and maintain than a monorail. These are more videos of the complex switching of rails in a monorail. This is a side-by-side -side comparison of the track switching of the LRT, cable liner, and monorail. The LRT is the simplest, while the monorail is the most complex and the most expensive. The switching of the cable liner is similar to that of the monorail, but it is a lot smaller and much less expensive. This is a side-by-side -side comparison of the track switching of the LRT, cable liner, and monorail at the depot. The comparative degree of complexity is the same. The LRT is the simplest, while the monorail is the most complex and the most expensive. Shown in green circles are where the switching occurs. The seemingly big disadvantage of cable liner compared to LRT in track switching is in reality not a big one. This is because track switching and a cable liner are only used at stations. Also, there is no depots in a cable liner system like those of all other modes of mass transportation including BRT. Depots are needed to store and maintain transportation vehicles. In a cable liner, the station is a sort of mini depot where trains are stored and maintained. A maintenance personnel can access the fewer parts that needs to be maintained underneath the tracks and the cable liner at the station.